as WVU continues to search for a men's basketball coach. Last season's leading returning scorer for the Mountaineers has decided to enter the transfer portal. Let's go. What's going on, Mountaineer Nation? Jordan Cruz back here with the Country Roads webcast. And before getting into this video, I just want to give you guys a quick reminder, if you would, do us a favor, hit that like button, give us a thumbs up on this video. It'll really help not only its performance, but future videos' performances here on the channel. And if you're a West Virginia fan, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Helps us, and it helps you, as it helps get more of this Mountaineer sports content out to Mountaineer Nation. Having said that, let's get into it. All right, so leading off here with the unfortunate transfer news, this is something we were all kind of hoping not to see come to fruition here as we knew it was possible with the loss of Bob Huggins that a lot of these players would maybe choose to transfer and not play for WVU this upcoming season. We were really worried about the incoming transfers. However, it looks like one of the returning players on the roster has decided to be the first one to go. And as you see, of course, that is Trey Mitchell, who would have been the leading returning scorer for West Virginia this upcoming season. These reports broke late last night from Justin Jackson of the Dominion Post. He was the first one to put it out. It's now kind of been confirmed and is official that Trey Mitchell has entered the transfer portal. Mitchell appeared in all 34 games for West Virginia this past season, as you see detailed in this article on WVSportsNow.com by the great Ethan Bach. And this, of course, is the uh, most infuriating part, I think, because I think we had all seen this uh, recently, and that's Kentucky being the team that's linked to Trey Mitchell. So, you know, if he does end up going to Kentucky, it's obviously tampering. I mean, pretty blatant, right? But it uh, doesn't seem like it's going to matter. We saw that happen before with Oscar. Uh, they've been after Trey Mitchell. I've also heard they've been trying to get um, Jesse Edwards as well. So Kentucky really trying to poach our players. But of course, they're not the only one. There's been a ton of schools, a long list of schools that's been trying to do the same ever since this Huggins news came out. Unfortunately, it looks like Trey Mitchell has decided to maybe go there. We'll see how it plays out. Another thing that I've heard mentioned is that maybe he's entering the portal just until he sees who's hired at West Virginia. Then we'll make his decision either to return or go to Kentucky or whatever other program. I think that that's something that we need to take into account as well as players can still come back once they enter the portal. You know, those situations are few and far between, but they do happen. And we have seen them happen a couple of times here at West Virginia on the football side the past couple of seasons. So you never know. But I do find this interesting that uh, Trey Mitchell decides to enter the portal the day that one candidate for West Virginia seemed to gain a lot of steam uh, yesterday and maybe become the favorite. Let's talk a little bit about that now. All right, so as far as the coaching search is going for West Virginia, still continuing at this point, we kind of know who the players are right now. I know a couple of days ago, it was believed that Andy Kennedy may have been the favorite, and due to a poll taken from the players, uh, that is their favorite choice, so I think that it's interesting that when it appears that Kennedy may no longer be the favorite right now, that that's when we see our first portal entry and we'll see what happens. You know, one thing I've heard is that the players are maybe frustrated because just they're getting a lack of information. And it's not that whoever's the favorite now is not somebody they would want to play for. The players that we have on the roster and the transfers that are coming in are were all kind of seemingly hoping that it was someone from the Huggins tree um, is what we've been able to gather. However, I think that maybe if they were able to get some more info about this search and who is the favorite and those things could change. And then I think it's all subject to change and kind of hinges on when we do make that hire, not only who that is, but hopefully they give that person the chance to meet with this roster and these players afford them that chance before they decide to, you know, follow in Trey Mitchell's uh, steps and enter the transfer portal. But as far as who that coach may be, Personally, I, I think that this is going to wrap up very soon. I'm recording this on Friday, the 23rd of June. I would not be surprised to see something come out later today or tomorrow. I think that that's kind of what you're looking at, especially if who is believed to be the favorite right now is actually the favorite. And interestingly enough, I talked about some pipe dream candidates in a previous video I did here discussing coaching candidates, but there was one in there in the pipe dream candidate section that I mentioned actually had a decent, you know, little chance a lot more than these others. I just put them in the pipe dream um, section because that's kind of where we all believed it to be early on in this procedure. However, over the past couple of days, we have learned that John Beeline, yes, former West Virginia, Michigan, Cleveland Cavaliers coach John Beeline, is actually does actually have some interest in this job. Apparently, um, the way that it was kind of placed was they brought him in to kind of be one of those consultants. We know about the meetings that Mike Ganzi and Joe Mazzulla had 
with the team trying to convince the players to stay and everything so he was kind of brought in almost in like a um, consultant capacity type thing I do believe but you know what they thought was going to be that quickly turned into something else when they realized you know he does maybe have a little bit of interest in getting back into coaching and they maybe presented it to him and you know he's been uh, thinking it over who knows but his name has certainly gained a lot of steam the past couple of days as I said the 70 year old beeline most recently coached the Cavaliers back in 2019 2020 since then he's been working in the front office with the Detroit Pistons which is why I think it's interesting because last night was the NBA draft so if beeline is your guy you're not going to announce it during the draft probably he's probably gonna have to get through all that and it would come you know on the Friday or Saturday um, you know over this weekend maybe so keep your eyes peeled Mountaineer Nation I'm sure everyone's already already checking all the boards all the social media and stuff constantly trying to get a little bit of info on this coaching search but uh, certainly it's a name to keep an eye on John Beeline's up there and then of course the other name that we knew that uh, was up there was Andy Kennedy right and this is the one that's the favorite of the players has the tie to Huggins Huggins had mentioned in the past him you know being his successor potentially and I think a lot of the players really like Kennedy because they you know met him they've heard Huggins talk about him they played against his team they like the way he coaches and just the connection to Bob Huggins is why I think a lot of people on this roster were pulling for Andy Kennedy and there were reports coming out, you know, two, three days ago that they were in talks and stuff. I, I don't believe that those ended up being corroborated. However, he certainly is a name that's on the top of WVU's list. But because of those reports that were surfacing, he had to put out a tweet late, late, late on uh, June 21st, actually early into the morning on June 22nd. As you see there, 12.55 a.m. at Coach AK13 on Twitter, Andy Kennedy. Don't be a sheep. Hashtag fake news. Hashtag just blaze uh, with the snake and the basketball and fire emojis there. Uh, so interesting. He, he denies the rumors, right? But, you know, one thing to point out here is at no point in this tweet does he say, I'm not a candidate for a job. I'm not looking for, you know, it's just fake news that he was, you know, signing with West Virginia, that he was in talks with West Virginia. So I don't think that necessarily rules him out as a candidate still yet moving forward. However, it's kind of interesting that in the day that followed, that's when the stuff started coming out more about John Beeline. So I don't know if it's a deal of, you know, they were filling things out with Kennedy and didn't like the way it was, the talks were going, or if John Beeline, once they found out he had interest, he just kind of leapfrogged Andy Kennedy to become the current top candidate, which would make sense uh, to, in my eyes, obviously. So I, I, to me, you know, I mentioned it, you know, when we first talked about Bob Huggins resign, and I think John Beeline would be an absolute home run for West Virginia. So, you know, I think right now those are kind of the names you're looking at. John Beeline, Andy Kennedy, and maybe even throw Jared Calhoun in there, but I, I don't think that they're going to go that route, just to be honest with you guys. I think outside it right now, it looks like if you're hearing a name in the next couple of days, maybe John Beeline, maybe still Andy Kennedy, but Beeline appears to be the favorite now. However, there are those in-house options that, uh, West Virginia, you know, fans have wanted the Mountaineers to consider to hopefully, you know, they think that may be the best course of action to take to keep this roster together, to keep this transfer portal class intact would be to, you know, promote someone from within. And what we now know is that it came out just this morning, actually, that WVU had a fact-finding talk with the two assistants that are the ones that would be potentially up for that interim gig, those being Josh Eilert and Ron Everhart. You see this also reported by Ethan Bach over on WVSportsNow.com. And as I scroll down here, you'll see this report originally came from Adam Zagoria there on Twitter. But uh, West Virginia officials spoke tonight with assistants Ron Everhart and Josh Eilert. One source described it as a fact-finding call. Still no decision on new head coach. So that's intriguing there. What are they talking to them about? Hey, if we bring in X guy, would you be willing to stay on the staff? Or are they talking about, hey, if X guy decides, you know, not to come and coach here, would you be, either of you guys be up, you know, promoted for intern for a year? But I think as late as this is in the process, to me, that is uh, them, you know, putting feelers out as to how they feel about certain candidates, maybe. Because I think that they're going to maybe potentially try to keep some of these assistant coaches on staff just to have that uh, cohesiveness and to hopefully be able to use that as a, you know, 
bargaining chip to some of these players on the roster, some of these incoming transfers. Hey, we still, you know, kept a little bit of your staff around. They know the way Huggins like to do things. You know, they're going to look out for you just the same way he would. And hopefully you could maybe keep that roster a little bit intact uh, moving forward. So that's interesting. And as you scroll down here, you can see in this article over on WV Sports Now that uh, similar to what I was kind of talking about earlier, that these players not really having a lot of information on this coaching search could be leading to, you know, our first player in the portal here that we're talking about in this video in Trey Mitchell. But sources tell WV Sports now that the players are starting to get impatient with the coaching search as they're looking for answers on where the direction of the program is headed. Former WVU and Michigan head coach John Beeline's name has surfaced and gained some steam all day Thursday. We'll see if that's the way WVU goes in the hiring process. So there you have it, Mountaineer Nation. A bit of an update during a tumultuous time for the West Virginia men's basketball program. But we just got to hope that we come out on the other side of it okay. And, you know, fingers crossed that there's not more players looking to follow Trey Mitchell and enter that transfer portal as well. Like I said, there's a laundry list of schools that are, you know, hitting our players up, trying to get in contact with them. Jesse Edwards is one I know for sure, and I'm sure a lot of the other transfers are experiencing the same. Uh, shout out to Toothman Ford, uh, hooking up deals with Kirk Reese and Raekwon Battle. Hopefully those keep both those guys here in Morgantown. But now we really need to keep Jesse Edwards if we are losing Trey Mitchell and we were already looking for another player to back up Trey Mitchell at that spot as a transfer addition. So West Virginia is going to have to hit the portal and uh, make a couple of additions at least probably uh, once this new coach gets on. But hopefully we will know who that is in the next couple of days, guys. I don't expect this coaching search to drag out too much further. But what are your thoughts on Trey Mitchell entering the portal? Do you think anyone follows him? Would you be happy with John Beeline as the West Virginia men's basketball coach? Do you think that would happen, or are you hoping they go another direction? Any way you're feeling there, be sure to let us know down in the comments. We really appreciate the interactions as we continue to try and grow the Country Roads webcast community throughout Mountaineer Nation. Having said that, as always, I'm Jordan Cruz, and until next time, let's go Mountaineers. <music>